then maybe we should talk about a little bit about acquired resistance. And then we can talk about some of the drugs that are even newer yeah. that may can affect acquired resistance. So uh, of the patients that do respond, how long does that response last? And do we have any information to say what changed in the cancer yeah. to lead to acquired resistance? Yeah, I think most of the data, and I'll, and I'll turn my question back to you on acquired resistance, because I'd like to learn about, you know, clearly identifying mechanisms of resistance that can sequence therapies or, or, or inform us on what therapy is, is next uh, is important. Uh, but I think a lot of the responses we have seen have been quite durable. Um, and there are many patients who are still having responses, meaningful responses uh, from both the Amgen 510 uh, study uh, as well as the MRTX 849. I can't uh, recall what the duration of response is from, from either of these trials or if they've been reported, uh, but clearly many of the patients uh, that, been, that have been on drug still remain on drug, at least as of the last presentation um, that was uh, uh, um, the, present, the last presentation uh, that was put out uh, in 2019. I don't know if you've got any other additional insight, David, in terms of the durability. Clearly, these drugs elicit meaningful and durable responses. I think the question really is, what do you do once these patients progress, and do you have any sense of what the real mechanisms of resistance may be to these drugs? Right. I, I don't think we have any definitive answers. I, I have seen some preclinical data, which I thought were quite intriguing, which uh, say that compared to, um, let's say, other targeted drugs, like uh, those for EGFR mutations or ALK translocations, that bypass mechanisms may not be predominant here, that this may be a biochemical resistance with a changing of the binding affinity so that the GTP basically outclasses the drug, the drug in question. Yeah. If that's the case, then the question is going to be, what can you do to alter that sort of resistance? In other words, not that the patient came up with a completely new mutation, a bypass, for right. example. Uh, maybe we should just talk about some of the trials now with combinations. So uh, what do you think is rational and what are you doing? Yeah, I think one of the more rational approaches and one that we're doing here at Hopkins is combining these drugs um, with these KRAS G12C drugs, both with immunotherapy. I think there is some preclinical data to suggest that these drugs can elicit an immunogenic response when and synergize with immunotherapy. At least there's been some data, I think, preclinically with the Marathi drug. So there are some trial designs ongoing at our institution combining these KRAS G12C drugs with immunotherapy. I think there's some rationale also to combining these drugs with potential downstream pathway uh, inhibitors like MEK inhibitors. So uh, we are looking at uh, some of these drugs in combination with MEK inhibitors. I think combination approaches make sense. So those have been the two, um, I think, in our, in our kind of low-hanging fruit. I think there are others that have been discussed, and I'm interested to hear how you, what your take is on this. Clearly, other, other agents that may be important, CHIP2 inhibitors, other types of inhibitors, SOS inhibitors, that may, may synergize with these drugs. Um, but those are the two kind of combination approaches that we're looking at. I agree with those. We're participating in the AMG 510 master protocol, which uh, near and dear to my heart is the fact that it is built on and mimics lung map, yeah. where they have a series of sub studies with combinations, first out of the gate being a combination with the MEK inhibitor trametinib for the very reasons you mentioned downstream. We know there's already independent activity of a drug like trametinib, and also, biochemically, this may assist in, uh, in preserving response in the patients. And the second uh, of the trials to come out of the gate is with uh, a uh, checkpoint in, uh, inhibitor. Interestingly, there are also preclinical data which suggests that our old friend, the taxane docetaxel, may have some magic here. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we know. But I do think from every oncogene-driven cancer we have, and non-small cell lung cancer, we rarely cure stage four disease. Yeah. 
the treatment is very effective. Patients live better, they live longer, eventually they relapse. I am thinking it's going to be the same with these drugs. Yeah. And obviously the companies that are developing them want to get on top of that. They want yeah. to see what can we do to make our drug a better drug. 